Welcome back to my channel. Today I visited the Art Beijing 2019 Art Fair inside of the Beijing Agriculture Convention Center. It was such a trending event, many people told me about it, so I decided to go there by myself and check it out. As soon as I arrived at the Beijing Agriculture Convention Center, I was introduced to their ticket box. A quick access code. I had to basically scan it, pay for it, everything was operated on my phone and then I was given a quick access code. I could swipe my phone to a machine or to a ticket checker and then I was allowed in. There were four pavilions, today I only did one. You could only enter the same pavilion once with your quick access code ticket. So I could only do one today, I didn't have enough time, but I think with just one pavilion, I had seen enough, enough art, enough people. There were more people than art in there. You can see there are old people, young people, children, uh, lovers. You can see like groups of friends and they were rushing in out. They did one thing and they did just a uh, check in. In Chinese, it's called Daka. It's not check in the hotel. It means going in front of a very famous piece of artwork, usually large scale installations. And then you just go in front and take a selfie and publish on your social media, Instagram, WeChat, Facebook, as such. And then you show your friends that you are there. This isn't completely new. You could see that on Instagram, you could see that on YouTube, on Facebook, but the scale and the, let's say, demography of this event was such a strange thing. I could even see like toddlers and they would use their phone to take photos of those artworks. And do they have an Instagram account or something? Like they were too young to even have a phone themselves. But doesn't matter, everybody was viewing this whole exhibition, going through this whole fair on their mobiles. And I didn't quite get it because, okay, I went to Venice Biennale, I went to the Arco Art Fair in Madrid and plenty of other fairs like Art Paris, Photo Paris. There were people on their phones, but not at this scale. Everybody was just on their phones the whole time. And the second thing I noticed that almost at next to every artwork, there was this quick access code and you could scan with your phone. And I thought, oh, it's a way to sell the artworks probably. And then I was looking at this artwork, I was interested to know the price. So I scanned and I realized it wasn't a sales link. It was a private link to the private WeChat of the artist so that you could get in touch with the artist, you could talk to them, you could add them as friends and have a, some kind of personal relationship with those artists. And this thing was also something very amazing because think about it. If you're interested in knowing about this artist, you could just add him on WeChat. WeChat is the equivalent of WhatsApp, but with functions of Facebook. And it's like inside of your inner circle of your contacts. And I found it very surprising and also unexpected in a good way, like amazingly good. And I think it stimulates this kind of conversation between collectors and artists. And in many ways, you could jump the art galleries, art dealers. Although that normally the artists in China, I have talked to many of them, they wouldn't jump the galleries because they needed the management skill, they needed the communication. So they have still a very close relationship with their galleries. But you could do many things with the artists without the galleries, for example. If you want a commissioned piece or if you want to organize an exhibition with the artists. The last thing I noticed is that Many people were networking in a way that I have never experienced before. Okay, maybe I have experienced 10 years ago while I was living in China, when people would just come to you and ask you about what you do, they're interested in everything you tell them, and they would add your WeChat, which is like, ask for your number. And in Europe, you don't just grab someone in the middle of the fair and say, give me your mobile number. Uh, you at least wait and have a coffee. And after an hour of talking, if you are interested, maybe you will add maybe LinkedIn or something. I found the art gallery very interesting. They had some contemporary Chinese calligraphy works that I really loved. And I started talking to him. I realized I had some common friends with him. And then he introduced me to the friend that who just came by. And then they introduced me to the next person. And I realized immediately I was integrated into their um, social network, literally not the social like online, but in reality. 
And then I was talking to the Instituto Cervantes because I was their student and I live in Spain, I speak their language. I was just having a chat with them and a girl came to me and asking me what I do and she said, I'm interested in what you do, please add me on WeChat, let's keep in contact, I want to organize exhibitions. And everybody was super open and they wouldn't be worried like, oh, is that appropriate? They were super nice and I find it's very efficient if you want to network in the art fair. And usually you don't have a lot of time. You could see hundreds of people during the fair and you have four different pavilions to go through and you have to be efficient. This is like my first thought. And I think there's another thing behind, perhaps my analysis would be because of the one child policy, we are pretty much alone. We don't have brothers and sisters working in different industries who could help us to network, like broaden our personal networks. We don't have anyone else at our age to turn to. So we must hyper network. We must rely on business contacts. So it's crucial to turn strangers to business contacts and make business penetrate into another market, another industry and grow. And I think perhaps that was the reason. And don't get me wrong, those people who aggressively uh, came to me and asked for my contacts, which I found completely not offended, they were girls. They were not even like boys trying to get girls attention or anything. It was completely gender neutral. It was just for professional purposes. I have made a lot of contacts and have seen a lot of amazing art. And next week I have already made some appointment to see some serigraphy, to see some workshops and museums in the 798 and the different art zones from the contacts I made today. So tomorrow I'm going back again to see other pavilions. If you are interested to know more about about art in Beijing, let me know, leave me a comment. That's all for today. See you in another video.